Hello, my name is Hala Ghanim. This is an introductory lecture on simultaneous interpreting for morning studies, grade 4. This introductory lecture will cover main types of interpreting, features of simultaneous interpreting, simultaneous interpreting workplaces, objective syllabus, and lectures components. What are the types of interpreting? Before involving in simultaneous interpreting we, interpreting, we need to know all types of interpreting. First, we have sight translation. Sight translation is also known as sight interpreting, on-site or at site translation in the U.S. and it is defined as the reading of a text by the interpreter from the source language into the target language simultaneously and in a manner in which the content of the document can be easily understood by the audience. We have another type of interpreting which is called consecutive interpreting. This kind of interpreting is suitable for meetings and discussions of small groups. Negotiators stop after a few sentences or at the end of an idea and wait for the interpreter to translate accurately what has been said with the help of notes as necessary. We have liaison interpreting and it requires the interpreter to translate the speaker's message sentence by sentence, usually in a, small, in a smaller setting. Liaison interpreting is most often used in a business negotiation setting where key important points of a deal or contract must be conveyed with clarity. We have whispering interpreting or chachotage. In whispering interpreting, the interpreters sit very close to the listener, as we can see here from the photos. Uh, and the interpreter sits very close to the uh, listener and delivers his or her interpretation in a quiet voice while the speaker speaks. Thus, it is simultaneous interpreting without the support of a booth or any device. It is only visible when there are two listeners at the most. We have video conference interpreting. This means that the interpreter is involved in a communicative situation in which the primary participants are at two or more different locations that are linked via video conference. The interpreter is located with one of the primary participants. The other kind of interpreting is called remote interpreting and it refers to a communicative situation in which all primary participants are at a single location whilst the interpreter is at another location and they are linked to the primary participant via video conference. Telephone interpreting is another kind of interpreting and is, it is provided when an interpreter who is usually based in a remote location provides interpretation via telephone for two individuals who don't speak the same language. Most often, telephone interpreting is performed in a consecutive mood. This means that the interpreter listens to each utterance first and then proceeds to render it into the other language as opposite to speaking and listening simultaneously. Now we have simultaneous interpreting and uh, the interpreter works in a, a soundproofed booth with at least one colleague. The speaker in the meeting room speaks into a microphone and the interpreter receives the sound through a headset and renders the message into a microphone almost simultaneously. The delegate in the meeting room selects the relevant channel to hear the interpretation in the language of his or her choice. Now, moving to the characteristics of simultaneous interpreting. The technical equipment that's usually used in simultaneous interpreter interpreting are microphones, headphones and recorders. And this mode is preferred in a closed booth which is usually accommodate two interpreters who take turns approximately every 20 minutes. Interpreters need to be able to clearly see the main room from the booth 
as well as all possible visual aids that the speaker uses. This type of interpreting requires considerable preparation, experience from the interpreters. When do you utilize simultaneous interpreting? Simultaneous interpreting is used in conferences, scientific events, training programs in companies, webinars, financial reports, sales conventions, press conferences, forum and courtroom setting, especially the public hearing one. The objective of simultaneous interpreting. Students will be able to interpret in various settings and to develop their practice to an advanced level. Moreover, the participants will analyze the difficulties encountered them through interpreting assignment. And this can be done through discussion, small group work, and lecture to develop the knowledge and the competencies of English. Regarding the syllabus, the following topics will be covered during the two semesters. The conferences, speeches, business meetings, financial and international trade, science and technology, and finally, the legal setting. In respect to the lecture component, uh, the component is skills for becoming an interpreter and simultaneous interpreting theories and techniques, strategies to solve main problems, all these will be covered during lectures as well as the classroom activities. So we, we will play games, watching video clips, and doing presentation. This is like a conclusion for what have been said before. So we already covered the main types of interpreting, the features of simultaneous interpreting, the objective, the syllabus, and finally the lecture component. This is for uh, the reference if you would like to see it and thank you very much for your listening.